Back when Intel's Core series was first released, we were mostly still using Core 2 Duos and Core 2 Quads in my workplace. As we started upgrading, these new CPUs didn't seem to be noticeably faster than the Core 2 Duos or the Core 2 Quads that they replaced. The newer Core series was different than the Core 2s. Uh, a couple of differences are how all the cores are incorporated onto the same die, whereas the Core 2 Quad was essentially just two Core Duos on the same chip. Also, the newer architecture allows for an internal memory controller. So as you saw, we're going to use a Core 2 Quad Q6600 and a first-gen i5-750S. Both are quad cores and both run at 2.4 GHz. However, the i5 is three years newer and can turbo or overclock one core up to 3.2 GHz as needed. The i5 also supported additional instruction sets. First up, as usual, pass mark, and the i5 pulled ahead of the quad on just about everything, earning a score about 400 points higher. The memory test is more of the same, and it scored far higher than the quad. In 7-zip, the i5 finished about 40 seconds sooner. In Cinebench, they performed about the same, nearly identical actually. The i5 finished first, but only by about 10 seconds. In Handbrake, the i5 rendered about 4 FPS faster and finished first by about 8 minutes. Now, if you haven't yet, if I could ask that you leave a like and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thanks. As usual for the YouTube test, I used a 1080, 60 FPS video with all hardware acceleration disabled within the browser. Now, the quad played the video, although there were a lot of drop frames. It's still watchable, but a little jumpy at times. Whereas the i5 is buttery smooth and didn't drop any frames. Since I'm starting to run out of GPU on these faster processors, superposition was set to low at 720p. As you can see, the i5 owned the quad in this and scored nearly 80% higher. The i5's average frame rate was 53 FPS, while the quad managed to squeeze out 35 FPS. In Unreal Tournament 3, both were well over 100 FPS, but the i5 again pulled ahead, averaging about 35 FPS higher than the quad. GTA San Andreas was again no problem for either of these CPUs, but the i5 again pulled ahead, averaging about 25 FPS higher. I once again had to set the resolution lower than I usually would do for GTA 4. There were times where the i5's frame rate was actually double that of the quad. In the benchmark, both scored much closer to each other, but I'm told this has a lot to do with the in-game benchmark not being much use, you know, past 60 FPS, even with V-Sync disabled. Regardless, the benchmark still showed the i5 pulling ahead by about 10 FPS. Running the GTA 5 benchmark showed the i5 often pulling double the frame rate as the quad. It finished up with the quad averaging 29 FPS while the i5 scored about 58 FPS. And Portal, well, both are performed about the same. And again, I think I just ran out of GPU. But wait, what about overclocking the quad? Okay, well, here's a few tests with the Q6600 overclocked to 3 gigahertz. First, Cinebench, and yeah, overclocked, the quad owns it by finishing about two minutes sooner and scoring 200 points higher than the i5. In Handbrake, the overclocked quad finished only about a minute behind the i5 and had nearly the same average encoded FPS. With the YouTube test, the quad being overclocked definitely helped, but it still dropped frames. Now, I did run Y Cruncher on all of these, and the i5 pulled ahead, once again, uh, of the stock quad by about 84%. Looking at the apps that were tested, you can see why many, including myself, didn't notice a huge bump in speed uh, when upgrading to these CPUs, especially if the Core 2 quad was overclocked.
However, in games or anything that required a lot of memory bandwidth, there was no question. The i5 won them. The overclock quad did really well though, and you can also see why some just chose to overclock their Core 2 quads instead of upgrading right away. They really were fantastic CPUs. Now, personally, I didn't notice uh, a huge bump in speed or power until Intel reached their Ivy Bridge uh, microarchitecture. Yes, Sandy Bridge was an improvement over the previous architecture, but Ivy Bridge just felt faster and more refined. Once again, if you made it this far, thank you very much. Please remember to like and subscribe, and let me know what you'd like to see in any upcoming videos. I'll see what I can do to make that happen. Talk to you later.